Good morning, and welcome to today's Folio Forum, which is sponsored by the Open Library Environment in partnership with EBSCO and Index Data. My name is Kristen Martin, and I'm the Electronic Resources Librarian at the University of Chicago, and I'll be hosting today's event. Our topic of today is Participation Channels in Folio, How to Engage, and it's designed to be an exploration of the ways for you to both engage with the Folio project and keep up to date as new developments occur. Our speakers will provide a guide for how to navigate our websites and communication channels and provide some basic primers on the purpose and level of engagement on each. Following the formal presentations, we will open it up to your questions. Today's session is also being recorded, and it will be posted to the Open Library Environment website following the conclusion of this event. As an open forum, participants can see each other and all questions that are submitted, but we have muted everyone outside of the speakers for the sake of sound quality. However, we really do want to encourage your participation. Please enter any questions as they come to you in the question box within WebEx. You may also follow and participate in a conversation at Twitter using the hashtag at folio underscore LSP. But please note that we may not see your questions there. Our first speaker is Peter Murray, who is the Open Source Community Advocate at Index Data. A graduate, of Simmons College at library, a graduate of Simmons College of Library and Information Science, Peter worked in academic libraries or academic library consortia for 25 years. Now working for Index Data, his current activities include building relationships among libraries, organizations, and service providers participating in the Folio Open Source Library Service Platform project. Our second speaker today is Michael Winkler, the Managing Director of the Open Library Environment, who serves as the Chief Project Executive for the Olay community, which is committed to providing innovative software, the innovative software platform on which to build a new generation of library services. Prior to taking on his current role, Michael provided leadership and strategic visioning for the use of information technology at the University of Pennsylvania Libraries. Now I'm going to let Peter take it over. All right, thank you. Greetings, everyone, and thank you for joining us today for this Folio Forum on the project's communication channels. Uh, we know two things so far in the early days of the Folio project. Uh, first, there is a great deal of interest from a wide range of library professionals in a variety of organization types representing most parts of the world. Second, uh, we know that the project's communication channels uh, seem scattered and haphazard uh, to anyone who hasn't been following the hour-by-hour -hour progress of what is still a, a very young project. Uh, participants from the three partners, uh, Olay, EBSCO, and Index Data, have heard that, and we are making things better. Uh, part of that is today's Folio Forum that uh, outlines the broad philosophy for communication within the project uh, and an overview of the most common tools. Uh, in the coming days and weeks, you'll see more gentle visual uh, clues or cues and guidance to shape the use of the tools to match uh, the philosophy. And, of course, as a community project, your input, feedback, and ideas for making things better are most welcome. Uh, Michael and I have some prepared content to describe the communication channels we have now and how we see them being used. And we've left plenty of time at the end for questions. Uh, please use the question and answer tool in WebEx uh, to post your questions and comments as we go. And Michael and I will answer as many of them as we can at the end. Folio has been a fascinating project to work on, even at this young stage. Uh, and part of what I find fascinating is also what's leading to the challenges in communication. There are already certain things that we know about the project. Uh, like similar projects, we know that we're going to need a variety of communication paths, uh, channels where we are communicating in real time, like chat and conference calls and in-person meetings, uh, channels where we aren't in real time, like mailing lists, 
blog posts, blog reports, channels where we are physically located together in the same time and or space, uh, and channels where we are physically apart or separated by time. We also know that there are and will be people who are focused full time on the Folio project, uh, those who have other responsibilities but need to keep track of what's going on in the project, and those that are curious and just tracking the overall progress of ideas uh, in the project. We have also seen worldwide interest in Folio, uh, Europe, uh, the Middle East, uh, North and South America, uh, and that comes with its own set of challenges across time and languages. And finally, we have a, a strong suspicion, uh, if, if not hope, that the project will grow and evolve, uh, grow and evolve. With that in mind, we've set up four primary communication channels. Um, and acknowledge that there are a slew of secondary communication tools that will make sense for people to use uh, as needed. Uh, the four primary tools are Discuss, a web forum and mailing list combination, Wiki, a document center tool, Issues, an issue and task tracking system, and GitHub, where the developers will keep track of code. Almost everyone involved with this project will use the first two tools, uh, Discuss and Wiki. Uh, issues will become more widely used as Folio apps are created and tested, although there's already quite a bit of activity in issues for the project as a whole and the uh, platform code development. The primary tools were chosen because they address the challenges from the previous slide. Uh, they don't depend on people working at the same time or in the same place. Uh, they have features that enable people to easily follow along in a topic when they have time and they allow for multiple languages. We also know that there are a variety of secondary tools, in, including a project Slack team, uh, Skype, WebEx conference calls, and face-to-face -face meetings. These tools tend to be more immediate in nature, but that Immediacy is also exclusionary because not everyone is able to participate. There's a motto in the Apache Foundation that the Apache Foundation uses to tackle this problem. Uh, the Apache Foundation is one of the oldest organizations supporting open source. It can trace its origins back to the development of some of the first web server code in the early 1990s. The Apache Foundation also has many of the same characteristics that Folio has, uh, worldwide interest, uh, part-time and full-time contributors, and growing and evolving projects. Their motto is, if it didn't happen on a mailing list, it didn't happen. Or, put another way, if a conversation or decision didn't happen in a forum or communication tool with some permanence that everyone has access to, then it doesn't count. Uh, I'm proposing a folio variation on this model. Uh, if it didn't happen on a primary communication tool, uh, discuss wiki issues or GitHub, uh, it didn't happen. Uh, although primary communication tool is more wordy and complex than mailing list, uh, I also think our world is more complex now 
from when that motto was formed. Uh, so what does this look like? This diagram has across the top the four primary communication tools, uh, Discuss, Wiki, Issues, and GitHub. We are using specific systems for each of these tools, and those that have used uh, the tools before probably recognize the icons for each of them. Uh, each of these tools has a specific purpose uh, based on the characteristics of the tool. Uh, the Discuss tool has a hierarchy of communication, uh, categories at the top, then topics within categories, and posts within topics. The wiki is a place for documents that are mostly fixed in nature. Uh, the wiki is somewhat empty right now, uh, we'll, but we'll be getting some attention in the next few weeks as the special interest groups gear up. Issues is good for tracking bugs and tasks that have interdependencies, responsible parties, and due dates. And GitHub is where the project's source code is stored and where developers make pull requests to change the code. A side note for the developers in the audience, uh, we are not using GitHub's built-in issues and wiki features. Uh, that functionality is being handled by tools external to GitHub. Below these Four primary tools at the top are three examples of secondary tools. Uh, one is a Slack team that has been set up for the project. And two others are things that are already happening, uh, conversations on Skype and meetings of various sorts. The big arrow on the left is meant to emphasize how important it is for ideas and decisions from these secondary channels to make it to one of the primary channels, uh, and the most obvious uh, choice being discuss. In order to have a healthy discussion, ideas and decisions that are happening in these secondary channels must be vetted by a, a wider audience. Uh, so hearkening back to the motto, uh, if it didn't happen on a primary communication tool, it didn't happen. Uh, so let's talk a bit about that primary tool. Uh, Discuss is a combination web form and mailing list tool. Uh, it uses a piece of open source software called Discourse that was developed by the same people uh, that uh, created the highly successful Stack Exchange community of question and answer sites. In fact, if you've used a Stack Exchange site before, you will probably recognize some similarities in the user interface design. Uh, Discuss, as you might guess from its name, is the primary discussion tool to be used when you're seeking input from the broadest parts of the Folio community. The Discuss website is divided into categories and in some places subcategories. If you're familiar with mailing list technology, a category or subcategory is like a mailing list. Within categories are topics, which are like threads on a mailing list. And within topics, there are individual posts, which are like individual emails on a mailing list. Uh, I'm making this comparison to mailing lists because it's possible to set up your Discuss account to behave like a mailing list. And I'll talk about that in a minute. When you first come to Discuss, you'll see this purple banner near the top of the page. Uh, you can make this banner go away by clicking the X in its upper right corner. Uh, 
if you did that before and now want to see what was in the banner, uh, the URL is discuss.folio.org uh, slash welcome dash banner. There are two important links in this banner. Uh, the welcome page link that offers an orientation to using the discuss tool and the behave like a mailing list link if you want to set up your interaction with discuss to be more like a traditional mailing list. Below the paragraph, there are some links to other details about the site, uh, including expectations for discussion on the site and the code of conduct, uh, standard privacy in terms of service documents, uh, which is actually mostly just boilerplate that came with the software, and a link to the site feedback category uh, where you can post your questions and comments about the tool itself. The behave like a mailing list document has more details comparing the functionality of Discuss with a traditional mailing list and uh, also details for configuring Discuss to be more like a mailing list. Uh, by way of quick overview though, uh, this little uh, screen capture is part of your Discuss Preferences page. Uh, discuss, the Discuss tool doesn't expect you to be on the website all the time, and here's where you can set up under what conditions you want to receive notification emails and how often. How often. A checkbox is at the bottom of the uh, uh, bottom of this uh, screenshot, uh, and it has the effect of turning your Discuss account uh, into a mailing list. Uh, you'll receive an email for every message posted to a, t a category's topic. I would encourage you to try using some of the other functionality of Discuss uh, to see if that meets your needs. Uh, and that takes us to the notification options. Uh, categories and topics uh, each have notification options that you can set. Uh, these need to be set from the web interface uh, unlike a mailing list, there is not commands that you can send by email to the mailing list software. Um, remember that categories are the high level areas of the tool and topics are threads within categories. Uh, the notification options for categories have one more choice than those uh, that are in topics, uh, and I think it's a handy one. Uh, the watch first post option will send you a notification of a new topic, and then you can come to the Discuss website and decide which of the four options on the right side of this screen uh, you want to set for that topic. Uh, note too that for both categories and topics, one of the options is muted. Uh, if you don't want to receive any more notifications from a category or a thread of discussion, you can tell the software to ignore it for you. Since Discuss is such an important tool that's going to be central to the topic, uh, one final thing I wanted to point out was how to start a new thread of discussion. Uh, on every screen is a new topic button. Uh, when you activate that, a new topic pane slides up from the bottom. You can put in a title for this topic and a category. Uh, if you leave the category as uncategorized, one of the community moderators will assign the topic to one of the existing categories. Uh, as you see on as you type on the left side, 
you'll see a preview of your post on the right side. And also note that you can uh, drag and drop images in or paste them into that same left side pane uh, to upload them uh, to your post. Uh, when you're done, activate the create button or create topic button at the bottom. Uh, it's as easy as that. Uh, the discuss tool has other features to explore too. Uh, for instance, a like button that helps the software draw the attention of others to a particularly good post. Uh, there is also a flag button that calls a post uh, to the attention of the community moderators. Uh, if something is uh, spam or off topic uh, or isn't following the uh, community discussion guidelines or the code of conduct, uh, you can use that flag button to uh, make the moderators aware. That's it for the discuss tool. Now I'm going to pass the WebEx ball over to Michael uh, to talk about the other tools uh, and the special interest groups. Michael, it's all yours. Thanks a lot, Peter. Um, <clears throat> and welcome, everyone. Let me add my welcome. Uh, and I'm just going to set up screen sharing here. And I don't think that's the right one. Hey, Peter. Yeah. Well, we're waiting for uh, Mike to get his screen set up. We did get one question that came in um, wondering where the hashtag Folio IRC channel fits in. Yes. Um, we have not been using uh, IRC so far. Uh, there is a Folio channel on uh, Freenode. Uh, the real-time chat has uh, migrated into the Slack team uh, and uh, to the uh, person asking the, the question, uh, certainly invite your feedback on that. Uh, uh, post it uh, as a, a topic on uh, Discuss and uh, we'll, we'll gather a consensus about uh, what we want the role for IRC to be in the project. Thanks. And Michael, we do see your one browser with the uh, the uh, slides, so I think you're <laughs> set to go. Uh, thank you. Uh, <laughs> I, I was looking for a little validation there. Um, so uh, in this transition, I just wanted to highlight a couple of things that Peter uh, was hitting on. and. And basically, uh, it boils down to the challenges of communications in a, in a large distributed project like this. And when I say large, um, you know, we're beginning to get some sense of uh, how much interest there is uh, in Folio and how many people are uh, finding or trying to find ways to, to be involved. So many of you probably became aware of Folio by going to the folio.org site and signing up. Um, and, and we have well over a thousand people that uh, have done that and indicated interest. Um, these folio forums that we've been having for several weeks um, uh, now are um, reasonably well attended. Uh, we've hit highs of, of as many as 300 people on some of these um, and uh, uh, are you know very happy to continue doing this and trying to find interesting topics to talk about. Uh, in terms of folio. Um, 
the Slack channels that uh, Peter talked about, uh, we've topped 100 uh, users uh, on those Slack channels, and, and there are several um, raging uh, communication um, uh, conversations that are going on there right now. But there are these challenges that we have, and, and I think part of what we're trying to do today is, is begin talking about how we're addressing those um, or trying to address those. And we're certainly looking for feedback uh, both positive and critical on how these tools work um, and how the layout of the tools, how we conceive of people engaging uh, works as well. Some of those challenges, though, that I just want to um, highlight are really sort of pivots uh, in the way people want to communicate. So there's synchronous versus asynchronous of of having a conversation with someone or a group of people and being able to play off of how um, concepts and ideas are developing in that conversation is very different than um, conversations that take place over uh, expansive amounts of time where people aren't uh, directly engaged with each other, um, where there's some talking back and forth uh, that is somewhat natural uh, and like a conversation, and then other times there's just several people saying different things at different times, and you have to sort out how those channels work. There's, there's a pivot between people who are interested in staying informed, um, knowing what's going on, having an idea of what Folio is doing or how uh, development is coming along, versus people who really want to get engaged, uh, who want to go deep into um, what's, what's happening, uh, want to provide uh, direct information or feedback, um, and be engaged with the developers or the designers or the community in some kind of way. Within focus, people have different fo focus as well. Uh, there are functional experts who know a lot about what libraries are trying to do uh, and how software can be a tool to those service paradigms that they are uh, engaged with or trying to create. There are technical people within libraries, within vendors, and within service providers who are interested in the technology that Folio is building on uh, and how you would do development uh, in that environment or service the applications that are running in the uh, Folio platform. There's operational focus, uh, people who are concerned with the performance of the system uh, and, and the deployment of the system. Uh, how would it work in their environment? Uh, how would they get the code up and running? What are the requirements? Uh, for um, either investigating the Folio platform or, in fact, moving it into some kind of uh, production status as, as the code base grows. And then finally, there's a strategic focus. People who are really looking at um, uh, the set of tools that libraries use uh, and how they service our long-term interests and goals. Uh, what's strategic about um, where we're going and how will tools like this help us get there? How will libraries serve new service paradigms, create uh, uh, new uh, modes of interaction with our uh, users and patrons uh, in our institutions? And they're thinking about things that are going to happen over the next two, three, five years even. Um, so when you get people in a room together, into a conversation together, sometimes you have to deal with all of these uh, different challenges in the communication um, and try to sort it out and, and help uh, everyone who's involved feel like that um, they're having impact, that their voice is being heard, uh, and that they're contributing to the overall effort. So a lot of this, and the reason why we have so many uh, channels of communication, is trying to get the right people to the right place at the right time. So with that digression, uh, I'll get back to talking about some of the tools, uh, and then we'll get on to the question and answers as well. So as, a, as Peter has noted, there are a set of primary tools that we use, uh, and our wiki is certainly one of them. Um, it is, uh, at this point, pretty threadbare, uh, but we will begin putting documents in. And it is, as uh, you might expect from having used wikis before, it's a place to store documents that are references, reference points to uh, the project. It's a place where you can go and see codes of practice, um, uh, foundational kinds of documents about 
um, uh, how to engage with the, the Folio platform or with the project or with the communities, how to set up a, a SIG. Um, uh, it's also where our agendas and meeting notes uh, will be kept. And then some critical papers uh, that we uh, will be developing over the, the, the life of the project and giving them some place to um, have some permanence. So documentation, reference, and guidance are um, in the wiki. We also, as Peter noted, have uh, a JIRA site. Uh, this is an issue tracking uh, system um, and gets a little bit closer to the software, uh, and to the developers. Uh, it's a place to put bug reports, uh, to to monitor feature development, to see how it's being broken up into tasks uh, that developers or designers are working on, um, and to report issues that you're having or um, um, developments that you would like to see get started. Um, it's, a, it's a good place for tracking those kinds of things, but it is very detailed. Um, it's at a relatively low altitude of specificity. Um, and uh, is a primary tool for the development team to use to order its tasks and to understand who's doing what. Uh, so it's a standard use uh, of JIRA, uh, nothing really different about what we're doing here, if you've used it before, or any kind of issue tracking system. Um, it's good for seeing what's going on, what's active, and who's doing what about those things that are active. We talked a little bit about Slack already. Um, it is real-time communication, uh, very much like a chat service. Um, we have, um, even since I've taken this slide shot, uh, we've added a new channel to the, to the set of channels that are available in the Folio Slack uh, team. Um, and we're trying to divide it up a little bit so that some of these conversations um, uh, have some structure around uh, the ideas that are being put forth in there. So there's a development channel that is primarily uh, about the development process. Um, it, it notes when there are uh, pushes into the GitHub repository um, and, uh, and the like. There are discussions going on around the user experience, the UX piece, uh, that are quite active at this point, talking about how the software should work with end users. Um, uh, our designer, uh, Philip, uh, Philip Jacobson, who uh, gave the folio form two weeks ago, um, is an active participant uh, in that channel. Uh, and it's a good way to, to have direct conversations with him and the rest of the design team uh, and people that are engaged with thinking about how folio should solve specific problems. It's used for consultation. And you'll see uh, people post questions in there uh, that they're looking for answers to. So these will be relatively specific about um, we're thinking about working in a particular kind of way. What do people think about that? Uh, it's a good place for highlighting um, uh, new ideas um, or trying to get some issues pushed uh, in front of uh, a conversation so that we can figure out how important it is. It is wide ranging. Um, uh, it is conversational. Uh, it's 24-7 and you can spend and waste a lot of time uh, monitoring what's going on there. So as they say, don't look for synopsis or aggregation here. This is the ragged edge of communication. If you want to engage at that level, uh, you can get a, an invitation into the Slack channel uh, and jump right in. Uh, we have a blog that's getting started uh, uh, that um, will be at folio.org. Um, right now, there's a news feed there, uh, but we'll be um, beginning to generate um, blog uh, articles or entries, posts uh, that you would expect. Um, they're going to be topic discussions, really trying to get people to think a little bit about what Folio can do or should do for them. Um, it is where we'll summarize Q&A uh, that is going on, not only in the Folio forums, but in live presentations that we make or in Slack channels, uh, that sort of stuff, uh, a place where we want to bubble these up uh, for larger comment, but also to 
um, try to get information out to people uh, and, and provide a mechanism or an avenue for sort of sampling what's going on and getting a sense of uh, how Folio is addressing problems. Uh, there may be provocation in the in the blog channel. Uh, we may push articles in, or other people may uh, produce articles or posts uh, that challenge our current way of thinking about library automation software. Um, and we really want to spark that deeper consideration and think about uh, the longer term needs that libraries have and how software uh, needs to be designed to uh, approach and address that. And then there are the forums. Um, this is a forum that you're all in today. Um, we are doing this every two weeks. Uh, generally, there is a Q&A session at the end of it. And clearly, it is meant as kind of a, uh, a one-way communication. Uh, we have topics that we set up about this. And then we'll do presentations and open it up for Q&A. It's a great place to just drop in and um, get information about Folio and what's going on. We will probably do some uh, demonstration uh, presentations so that you can see the software in operation. Um, but we're, at this point, talking a lot about what Folio is and the design and development process. It's open to wide participation. Um, you're not committing to anything by coming to a Folio forum. Um, you can just sign up and register uh, and attend. And we have um, uh, many people that have attended um, several of them. Uh, as I say, we do them about every two weeks. Uh, our intent is to roll questions up into blog posts or try to get themes uh, through the question and answer process um, that, that are interesting to, to the larger community or that need to be addressed in some kind of way. So your questions, even though they may not get answered in the, in the specific form or may not get answered fully because they're there are questions that require a lot of uh, discursion and discussion. Uh, they may spark off blog posts or uh, discuss postings, um, uh, and we would certainly try to let people know that those, those things are coming up. And we also welcome uh, suggestions for topics for our forums uh, going forward. Uh, what's interesting in this format? Uh, what would you like uh, us to present on? Um, are there topics that we should be hitting? Uh, and then a word about something uh, that we're, we're beginning to think quite a bit about how to get started is uh, special interest groups, is uh, setting up a mechanism by which interested people can come together. Um, and, and when I say people, I mean the, the full range of people that could be involved uh, in the Folio project. So that would include librarians and designers, developers, service providers, and vendors who could come together around some kind of special interest that they have and can articulate. And you, you see here these full four bullet points that we have considered as a relatively lightweight piece of governance over how the SIGs would operate. Um, creating the SIG would uh, enable a group of uh, people to have a conversation, and we would provide a set of tools for you, um, any or all of the ones that you see listed here on this slide. Uh, you could get a, a discuss category or some space on the wiki. Um, if it's a more technical uh, group, they may uh, have use for uh, issue tracking. Um, and then we can certainly set up Slack channels uh, for conversations, direct conversations in, in those SIGs. But we really view the SIGs as a fairly critical um, uh, part of the long-term uh, persistence of the Folio community. It's a way for people to really talk about the software in specific kinds of ways <clears throat> and how it would address specific kinds of problems. So we've already had uh, ideas about um, uh, special interest groups coming together around uh, research data uh, or data management. Uh, we've had uh, interest in teaching and learning and the intersection with library automation systems. Um, we've had people talk about um, SIGs uh, developing around discovery platforms and how uh, a, a platform like Folio can better support uh, discovery tools, um, all the way down to relatively specific kinds of uh, SIGs around 
uh, authentication and authorization, um, or UX. And then uh, uh, we're not stopping at any of this. Uh, all of this is somewhat in flux and still developing, um, and um, we, we will continue to roll out um, ideas about how to improve communications about it. Uh, soon at folio.org, you'll see a first stop page for communications channels. Uh, this will lay out all of what Peter and I have talked about today uh, and have links to get invites or to join or, or to become part or at least to be able to monitor uh, each of these channels or all of these channels. Um, uh, Philip uh, Jacobson, as I mentioned, uh, did the Filio forum two weeks ago. He is a designer in the project, uh, and he's committed to uh, publishing in the Discuss channels the design bytes. Uh, these are relatively um, uh, direct um, conversations that he's starting about specific kinds of functionality that uh, will be pervasive in the Filio platform, so things like uh, message channels and how they would work or uh, how patron um, engagement and accounts would be set up. So it's an, it's an awfully good uh, opportunity to see uh, what's going on and what I've noticed is that the, at the bottom of each one of these, Philip puts a series of questions that he's looking forward to get comment and uh, responses to. So a, a good way to jump right in and um, uh, be involved in some very specific parts of the folio development. Uh, we, as I noted about the SIGs, we'll be setting up a page uh, to uh, help foster the SIGs um, uh, starting up and uh, get, getting the in resources and infrastructure that they need in order to be effective. Um, and then there's some blog posts that are uh, teed up uh, to be coming out on the folio.org site soon. Uh, around the philosophy of Folio, um, how are we approaching this? Um, what are what are the um, uh, technological infrastructure uh, that we're using, um, and then how could you engage um, in all of that as well? So with that, I think we've reached the end of our presentation, um, and uh, we're open for questions. So if you have a question, uh, you can post it in the uh, Q&A uh, box in WebEx. Yeah, thanks, Mike and Peter. Um, I'll ask a question while people are thinking. This is Kristen Martin again. And, um, and I also just wanted to clarify a little bit, because um, we've talked on Slack and getting invitations. And my understanding, Peter, and you could probably clarify this, is that it's an automatic um, acceptance. So you don't have to feel like you're going through some sort of review process to join the Slack channel. That's correct? Oh, very, very good point, yes. Uh, so, I mean, we're using Slack in a way that wasn't really intended. Uh, you know, Slack is, is intended for internal team communications where Everybody's sharing the same email domain, and so the system will recognize when it gets an email uh, from that domain, or uh, there's a, a you know a, a list of email addresses that's dumped into Slack, and and those people are automatically added. Um, the the other mechanism is to uh, have invites sent, and so uh, there's a, a bit of uh, uh, technology in place. Uh, that automates that process. Uh, you put in your email address, uh, the software uh, talks to Slack to send the, uh, the invite to you, uh, you get that email, you follow the link, and uh, you're done. Uh, there is, that's a good point, there is no review process or, or anything like that. Uh, it's just how we have to uh, get around the fact that we're using uh, Slack for this broad uh, uh, group activity and not just uh, a single organization using it. Thanks. And I can build on that actually. Uh, just a further comment is we're very interested in as much as possible all of these channels being as easy to engage with. Um, you know, if you've, if you've 
engaged with blogs before, you know that that's just sort of a very passive thing. You don't typically have to join anything and you can just go and look at them. Uh, but things like uh, Jira, GitHub, and um, wikis uh, might be a little bit different. So we are really looking at how to uh, open this up as broadly uh, to everyone. And we're, we're again very interested in um, uh, feedback from the community about what tools work best for you or, or what uh, configurations of those tools can support deeper and better communications. Um, and I have another question for you since you started talking about the special interest groups. If there are individuals that um, want to start a special interest group, do we, is the process for doing that proposal for engagement um, available at any of the different tools right now or is that still coming and then who would be approving that um, proposal for engagement or making sure that it doesn't say duplicate another group? Uh, that process is not quite in place yet. Uh, the, there's uh, a draft of the proposal for engagement uh, that uh, I've been uh, meaning to get uh, onto the wiki page uh, so that uh, it, uh, it actually can be used. Um, the, the, this too is a, a place where the approval process is intentionally lightweight. Uh, if there, it, it mirrors in, in many respects the, uh, the process that LIDA uses uh, to start interest groups and, and that is uh, if there is uh, people that express uh, interest in the topic and, and uh, want to talk about it, then um, uh, given enough people, uh, five or ten, uh, will uh, get the will get the group started. Um, there, in terms of, of detecting overlap, uh, the uh, we will look at those uh, to make sure there there isn't a, a duplicate being put in place. Uh, but we in intentionally wanted to, to make this process uh, really lightweight uh, so that these uh, groups can come and, and go uh, as, they, as, uh, as they need to. And, and to just extend on that, I, I mean, we are trying to keep a lot of these structures lightweight, as Peter says, and the governance of them. On the other hand, some governance is typically um, required particularly when you have lots and lots of people who could be engaged. So we, we do have this concept of a SIG of SIGs and when I say we, um, uh, we really mean the community, people who are interested in um, how to manage large open source uh, engagements like this where um, functional specialists and designers and developers can come together and work on this. Um, so uh, the we here isn't uh, Peter and I uh, making determinations about whether there's overlap or not. Uh, we're really looking for people to engage and that SIG of SIGs that I talk about, it's, its primary purpose would be to be a resource to the SIGs, uh, to help them uh, get started, to help them set up the channels of communication that they need uh, and to help them try to be effective uh, in it and have impact in the, in the folio. Uh, project in, in whatever particular way their SIG is looking to do that. Yeah, great point, Michael. Thanks. Um, I am not seeing any other questions coming in. It's um, great to have answered everyone's questions. Yeah, so people <laughs> must feel either completely confused or um, completely satisfied. Well, just to address uh, potential confusion, uh, we, we know that there are, there have been uh, different messages about how to engage with Folio and and um, what channels of communications are available. Uh, so we are, in fact, trying to hone in on the set of tools that uh, we've talked about today. Um, clearly, there may be others uh, that it, that could uh, spin up or be useful. And again, we're looking for that feedback from the community out there. But we do want to keep it somewhat stable going forward so that people have some expectations. And on the folio.org site, very soon you will see a communication page 
uh, uh, come out that helps people understand what are the channels and gives a bit of description about if you join that, what would you expect to see there? Great point, and also I hope today we've uh, given a, a enough context uh, so that if you have those comments and thoughts about the communication channels, uh, you can, um, well, actually use the communication channels to <laughs> let us know. Right, I think that that's a really good point. Uh, you know, we will have a place that you go and request to set up um, uh, a SIG, but there's nothing that would preclude you right now from going to discuss uh, and uh, either joining a, a category or a topic or suggesting a new one um, yep. there. So um, we really do encourage that, and and the Folio project managers will take on some burden for um, trying to help out and, and foster the development of these conversations, uh, at least for the near term, until um, we have more people who are, are looking to engage in that. Um, and a final question from me, just thinking about where people should go if they want to view previous forums and um, if they want to cap the, the recording from this one. I know we've been posting the announcements of these on the Open Library Environments blog, and there's been some overlap between that and the Folio blog. Are we looking at consolidating those so that we can use the Folio blog as like the canonical blog, for lack of a better word, um, so people can know to go there if they want to get recordings of previous forums? Are those going to continue to be kind of jointly hosted on the two blogs? Um, I think the, our intent is to begin moving um, uh, to reduce duplication, particularly of channels that are the same, um, at least in purpose and, and structure. Uh, we've been posting the recordings, and there's a question specifically about that. It takes me about um, half a day to get the recordings up, uh, and they will be at the openlibraryenvironment.org site under forum. Um, and that's where we post the notices for uh, any of the forums that we're doing, and then once the forum is over, we post the, the recording from it. Um, as you can imagine, behind the scenes, there are accounts and uh, infrastructure that are built to support all of these things, and, and yeah, we're looking at how to, how to rationalize that a little bit better. Well, yeah, I did want to let people know we will, on the registration for this forum, that's where we're going to put up the recording. And there is, in fact, a link from the Folio news blog to the Open Library Environment registration form, too. So so they are connected. So if um, you want to share this with any of your colleagues, we'll have the recording up there after Mike uh, gets it converted. Uh, with the lack of other questions right now, I think we can wrap up. Unless there's any uh, parting words or parting shots. None for me. Thanks for the attention, of course, and the interest in the project. All right. Well, thanks to everyone for participating, and thanks to you, Peter and Mike, uh, for giving us this overview and everyone who submitted questions. And we hope that you found this useful and that you'll continue to be engaged in the project through all these opportunities that we discussed. We're still finalizing information for the next forum, and we will get that out as soon as we have it ready. And again, the forum has been recorded, and we will get the recording posted up um, using the same page as the registration page. So thank you very much. Thanks, everybody. Bye. All right, bye.